Okay, we're in section 18 and we're doing the homework. All right, so let's do one problem at a time. And as I go through these, I'll talk about the work that I would like to see if I were taking an exam from a student. So it says, find the inverse G of X of blah, blah, blah. So um, what I would probably do is just, you know, simply write down that um, at what F of X is. And I like to write down the domain and range of these things over here. And that's something that you were encouraged to do also in math 119. So what's F of X? F of X is a function. And that function is the root of X8 plus 10. And then they tell me the domain of this thing is from zero forward. All right. What's the range of this guy going to be? Well, the range of this guy here, well, if you think about it, if you start at zero, it would be root 10 forward. So I'll put this over here, root 10 forward. All right. Now, where'd you learn about domain and range in math 119? All right. Now, certainly I don't remember the question at this point, but I do know that they did say find inverse. So let's go through that. I'm going to call the inverse F inverse. Now, I know in the notes I called this G. What do I know about uh, G? I know it's domain and I know it's range at this point. And why is that? It's, it's looking at the function, just a rotation of the coordinate system. So it's going to be root 10 off to infinity. And the other guy's going to be zero to infinity. Again, range becomes domain, range becomes range. Okay, let's, let's find the inverse. How do we do that? Well, in Math 119, they told you to rewrite the function as y equals the root x8 plus 10. The next thing they told you to do is interchange x and y. I got to solve for x. I'm sorry, I forgot to write it. You got to solve for y now. Square both sides, we'd get x squared equals y8 plus 10. And I got to solve for y now. So y8 would equal x squared minus 10. And now what's y going to be to it? Well, it's plus or minus. But I want to point out, I don't want to write that down because I'm looking at this thing over here and I'm looking at the, uh, the, uh, the range of its positive numbers. So it's going to be the root of, not plus or minus. What root? It's the eighth root. All right, let's write this over here. So this would be the eighth root of x squared minus 10. There's another way of writing that down as x squared minus 10 to the 1 8th power. All right, let me see if I've done what I've been asked. They did say find the inverse. I think we did that. And I think we got it right. I'm seeing that in my answer key. The next thing they say, calculate g prime. All right, so let's put that down for you. What's g prime? Fairly simple. It's 1 8th x squared minus 10. Take away one from the exponent, that's minus seven a's, times the root of the inside, which is two x. I want to simplify that. That's going to be x, four. And then what do you get? You get x squared minus 10 to the seven eighth. Uh, this is defined on the interval now, not starting at root 10. When I say that, not including, I should say. So the domain of this thing going here is x, has to be greater than the root of 10. All right, let's go back to the K and see how we did. And did I get that? X, I got the four. Yep, we're done with that. All right, so this problem, again, we, we walk through the steps. I'm looking at my key to verify that I did okay. All right, let's go to number two. And number two says use the theorem. And before I do that, let's just talk about it briefly. And I'll look at the theorem later, but right now, I know they give me a function f of x, really the same loop as I was before, and f of x is equal to the root of six minus four x. I like to I like to write the domain down and the range. And let's see, the domain is when six minus four x is greater than zero. It's a linear inequality, so that's going to be from minus infinity up to where that takes on a zero. And I would take on a zero at three over two. Yep, three over two. Inclusive. What's a range? Well, it's a principal root problem. So its range is going to be from zero off to infinity. All right. Now, what'd you do in math 100? Not 100, 119. You wrote the function that is y equals, and this is six minus four x. Got to keep going here. Got to, I guess, change x and y, right? x 
six minus four y, square both sides, you get x squared equals six minus four y. Well, I'm gonna to try to solve for y, I'll add four y to both sides and subtract x squared, and then divide through by four. All right, now I, I grant that the temptation is to say, oh, that's the inverse. Unfortunately, that's a parabola and parabolas are not invertible. So I gotta be real careful now. Let's write this down. So I can write down F inverse is equal to six minus X squared over four, or I could write down six over four, what would that be? That would be three halves minus a quarter of an X squared. Again, I wanna write the domain down and the range of this guy. What's the domain of it gonna be? Zero to infinity. All right, I'm seeing that on the other side. And what's, what's the range of this thing gonna be? Minus infinity, three halves. All right, that's the inverse. What do they call this thing? They call it G of X. All right, what do they want to find? G prime, fairly simple to do. What do you get? Minus one half times X. All right, and I have to put the domain down for that, right? So domain, is it's not defined at the end point. So the domain of that's gonna be from zero to infinity. All right, so let's take a look. And let's see if we got it down over here. I got I got the, the final answer down. Now, by the way, someone said, oh, you didn't use theorem one. Well, let's go through that with you. All right, so let's make sure I did this correct. Did I get the inverse down? G, six minus X squared over four. Yep. I'm seeing that, it's right over here. Uh, did you write F down, I didn't write that down, but that's pretty easy to do. Let me say it's pretty simple. So like this over here. And let's look at that theorem, what does it say? It says G prime of X equals one over F prime evaluated G of X. And let's write that over here. A little more difficult, right? So F prime, and what's G of X? Well, we got that, it's six minus X squared, right? over four. And someone says, you know, how do you do that? Well, I gotta know what F prime is to evaluate it. And what's F prime? It's right over here. And I think I can do that. And how would you do that? Just plug it in. And what do you get? And put that down for you. It'd be minus two. And this would be root. I'm sorry, I forgot to put the one down. Forgive me, go backwards here. It would be, you know, instead of putting one over, I just do the reciprocal of it. So it's gonna be minus the root of six minus four times that argument, which would be minus six plus X squared over two. And what do you get there? Oh, I gotta be real careful about this. And what do you get over here? Minus the square root of X squared over two. And what kind of value is X? Well, according to this inverse, it's gotta be greater than or equal to zero. So this is gonna be minus X over two. Got this over here. Again, X is greater than zero. All right, let's go to number three, a little more difficult. Um, I do wanna, I'll, I'll talk about using Sage in a moment, but um, I wanna be careful about this. All right, and so this is, why do you wanna be careful about it? They're asking questions. A lot of students I know on exams, experience giving people exams, and typically give them almost the same exact questions we give in the homework. And then a student gets the exam and says, I don't know what that question's about. Really, what does it communicate to a teacher that a student is really not engaged in their studies? Now, you might think that's just the way things is. It's not. A lot of people are engaged in their studies and they're the people that are gonna get, you know, what I call a better job. And, and sometimes I'm, not, I'm kind of warning you about this over here. You gotta put the time and effort into this. Let's talk about it. And I'll put this on the side. I'll write down F of X and then x cubed plus three x plus six. I'll write down the domain of this thing. It's gonna be minus infinity to infinity. And the range of this thing is also minus infinity to infinity. Now, by the way, this might be tough to show it's invertible, but I'm gonna say that they're, they're, they're talking about this thing being invertible. So I'm gonna say, oh yeah, it's invertible. Or I'm not gonna go through some big rigmarole about why it's invertible. But anyway, they, they go on to say, there's gonna be an inverse of this guy over here. So g of x, I don't know what it is, but I know it's domain and range. 
Well, that's pretty simple, right? Real simple. But what do they want to do? You know, certainly if I were going to try to find the inverse guy, let me find out how I would do that. I would write down, you know, y equals. And then I would change the x and y around. And this is where I'm at an impasse. You know, I'll tell you why. Trying to solve this for y now is really going to be really, really tough. So I'm going to say I'm not going to bother. They didn't ask me to do it anyway. So I'm going to say I'm not going to look for the inverse. What I want to do is I want to know what do they want me to do, though? They want me to know what g of 20 is. And I'll put this over here. And I'll put down, I don't know. So what I'm going to claim over here, there's a point in g, which is 20 question mark, which means f of the question mark would equal 20. So f of some question mark would equal 20. Well, what's f? F is going to be, let's write this down. It's going to be the question mark cubed plus three times the question mark plus six. Now, if they're asking me this question, it's got to be easy. I, I kid you not, this must be easy. So I hope you realize that you, when you took 119, you talk about the rational root theorems, I'm thinking maybe this is a rational number. It can't be that difficult. And looking at it, I'm going to make a wild guess at it. It's got to be either like one, two, or three, or six, or, or they're opposites, but it's clearly not the opposite. It's going to be one, two, three, or six. I'm going to think it's two. So I'm going to say f of two is 20. Well, two cubed is eight. Three times two is six. And let's see, six plus six is 12 plus eight is 20. Bingo. So I got my question. I'm going to get my eraser out and I'm going to erase this guy over here and put that number down. Now let's turn out to be the number two. Okay, let's go to the next question. By the way, the answers are listed for you. It says calculate G prime of 20. Well, again, this is where, you know, so I sort of want to go to the picture but I think I can do that by using that theorem. So G prime, I'll write this down over here, of 20 is gonna to equal to one over F prime, and then it's gonna be G evaluated at 20. Now I'll go to a picture later. We're using that theorem now. All right, so, so did I get F prime? No, I'll write it down for you then. So what's F prime? Go back up here. And what's F prime? It's gonna be three X squared plus three X. I'm sorry, plus, I, I misspoke there. Plus three, all right? So the next question is what's G of 20? Well, G of 20, I, I just did, it's two, right? Thank God we did that and to struggle with that again. So what's this gonna be? It's gonna be, well, let's look at it. It's gonna be F prime evaluated G of 20. I'll write that down. F prime evaluated G of 20. So it's gonna be F prime evaluated at two. What's that gonna be? Well, two squared is four, three times four is 12, 12 plus three is 15. All right, so I'm ready to write this down now. What's gonna be? one over 15. I'm gonna go back over here. I got that right. Now I wanna to go to Sage. And the reason for that, what I wanna do is I wanna graph a couple different things. And I'll tell you what I wanna graph. And I'll, I'll outline this for you. I wanna graph F. I want to graph G of X. I wanna graph out the tangent line to F, all right over here. So the tangent line to F, whoops, let me get back to my ink. So I want the tangent line to F at, a, at what point? Well, the point I want is at the point 220. And what's that slope gonna be? Well, I think we just did it, right? That's gonna be M for this guy over here. I'm gonna say M, sub f is going to be 15. And I also want to graph out the tangent line to g. And what's that point going to be? 20 comma 2. All right. What's its slope? It's 1 over 15. All right. 
Now, someone says, what's this tangent line look like? It would look like y minus 20 equals 15, x minus two. And this tangent line here is gonna look like y minus two, 1 15th times x minus 20. Now, someone says, why do you wanna go to the trouble of, dra of, of graphing it? It's no trouble at all. It's really quite simple to do. And what I need to do is I need to share another screen with you now. And I'll try to do that. And yeah, I prepared it in advance. Let me go through this. I hope you can see in the side over here that um, I'm looking at, you know, y equals x cubed plus 3x. And I, I'm going to call that graph for you. Oops, sorry about that. Uh, let's see. I guess we'll make it. I'm gonna make it a different color. I'll make it blue and I'll make it, yeah, that's blue. You got it, all right? And then this guy over here, someone says, how'd you graph that? Well, all I did was I changed X and Y. So at Y became X and X becomes Y. And I graphed this over here. Let me change the color of this over here. And I'll change that to green, all right? Now, I hope you realize that, that this curve and this curve are exactly what I expect from inverse. They're rotations about the line y equals x, which is that dash black line there. That's y equals x, just a rotation, just like you learned in 119, all right? And I plotted points for you. Let me point out what point I plotted over here. This point over here is 20 for the x-coordinate and two for the y-coordinate. And this, this point over here is two for the x-coordinate, 20 for the y. And then what I do, I put the two tangent lines I said I was gonna do, right? So I said I was gonna graph out, you know, y minus 20. I'm sorry, I think it's 15 I put down, right? Let me put this over here. And sorry about that. That's, I mistyped, I guess. All right, so I said I was gonna plot those two lines out, right? So what's one line I plot down is, you know, y minus 20 equals 15 times x minus two. Clearly tangent the curve we expected it to be. And the other line is gonna be, you know, y minus two. And these are all written in your notes, by the way, if you're copying what I'm doing at the board, uh, y minus two equals, whoops, 1 15 times x minus 20. Clearly seeing the tangent lines there. What do I notice about those tangent lines? Again, they're inverses of one another. They're just a rotation of the coordinate system. X becomes Y, Y becomes X. It's being rotated about the line Y equals X. Again, this may help you understand what we present. By the way, it's only helpful if you think about it, right? Only helpful if you think about it. I mean, again, we're helping you thinking about it. All right, let me go to the whiteboard, back to the whiteboard, I mean. And give me a second to do so. And I'll go back to the questions. And that was number three. Go to the next page. We'll do number four now. And number four, you know, certainly I'll read it to you. As I'm reading the questions to you, again, the hope is that you're also reading and trying to comprehend what you've read. So let's write this one down for you. Yes, I know the work is there. We're just talking through it for those students that need to have to talk through. F of G of X, what's G of X? One minus two X over two X. All right. If you want, you can simplify that. No need to if you don't want to, all right? So what I'm gonna do is, what does F do to that argument? Well, it's one, two plus two times the argument. Let me write the argument down again. What is gonna be one minus two X over two X, all right? Now they say I need to do that and I'll do that one step at a time. Again, if you're faster at this, that's fine. We're not asking you to go slow, by the way. What do you have here? One minus two X, again, I'm multiplying by two over X. What I would do now is multiply the top and the bottom by X. What do you get on top? X, what do you get on bottom? Two X plus one minus two X. What does this give you? Just X. Let's check our K and we see that there. What does this indicate to me? These are inverse of one another. All right, let's go to the next question. And what's the next question? G of F of X, I'll write that down for you. So G of F of X, and what's that equal to? It's G, well, what's F of X? No, we're not memorizing, we're just copying. 
all right? And what do you get over there? Well, what does G do to it? Well, I gotta, I gotta read that. It's, it's, it's one minus two times that over two times that. You know what I'm gonna do though? I wanna, nah, I'll just keep going. So what do you get over here in the bottom? You get two times that. Let me go through the work. The top is one minus, that'll be one over one plus X multiplying by two. The bottom will be one over one plus X. Multiply top and bottom by the minor LCD, which is one plus X. Again, basic algebra, one plus X minus one over one, which turns out to be X, which again is indicating they're inverse to one another. What do they want to do? Find G prime. All right, pretty easy to do. What's G prime? I got to find it's one minus two X over two X, right? By the way, I'm not opposed to using the uh, quotient rule. I'll write that down for you. Square the bottom. And then what do you do? Take the bottom to the top, multiply by the root of the top, which is minus two, minus the top, times the bottom, which is gonna be two. Let's go through that. That's minus four X, minus two, minus plus four X, over 4x squared. Don't we have a key? We make mistakes. We'll know we made a mistake. That's minus 2 over 4x squared. And that's going to be minus 1 over 2x squared. All right. By the way, if you look at what I did over here, I did it in a simpler way. But again, you decide how you want to do the work. All right. You decide. That's an important feature of, of your success is deciding how you want things done. All right. Let's go to the next page. Ooh, they want to do something a little more difficult. I can't even remember what the functions are but they want me to do one over, now I got to write down F prime and I got to write down G of X. So let me go back and G of X, I'll write that down for you first, is one minus two X over two X. And did I do F prime? No, I got to do it. Let me write that down for you. So F prime, I'll use quotient rule. That's going to be 2 plus 2x two squared. Bring it to the top, which is 2 plus 2x. Two Whoa, times the derivative of the top, which is 0, minus the top 1 times the derivative of the bottom, which is 2. And what do you get over there? Well, let's do that. You get minus 2 on top. And on bottom, you get 2 plus 2x two squared. All right, and simplify a little tiny bit minus two, and that would be four, and this would be x, whoops, I, I didn't mean to say that, one plus x squared, which is gonna be minus one over two, one plus x squared. Okay, so what do they want me to do? Well, I'm looking at it, and what they want me to do is one over F prime evaluated G of X. All right. Well, I'm gonna write G of X a little bit differently. I'm gonna write as one over two X minus one. All right, so that's what G of X is. And what do I gotta do with this guy? Well, I gotta plug it in up here. Right, I got to plug it in up there, see if I can do that. And I'm going to say that would just be one over two X, right? So let me write this down now. So it's going to be minus one over two. So I'm going to square over here and plug in that in, right? So the ones disappear and what you left off with, well, one over two X. I know it looks tough. It's not tough though. We can do it. What do you get over here? One. Minus one over, let's see, that would be one over two X squared. Whoa, this doesn't look right, does it? Let's keep going. And what do you get over there? Again, I'm just trying to do this over here. That's all I'm trying to do. I think I can do that. I know it's negative, right? And what do you get there? I guess you get this one. And this thing in the bottom just simplifies to two X squared. Let me make sure of that. 
Yeah. Wow, bingo. Got that right. All right, let's go to number five. Let me see if we can do that. This one says compute the derivative of the arc sine. Well, I can do that. So dy dx, you can also write down y prime if you like, is equal to derivative of arc, arc sine is gonna be one over the root of one minus x squared. That was easy. Where they wanna do evaluate dy dx when x equals four sevens. Some people write down this way, y prime where x is four sevens. I'll go through the arithmetic now. And what do you get over there? One over the root, one minus, well, four squared is going to be 16. Seven times seven is 49, right? And we keep going. And again, I know it's tough, but we're trying to encourage you to try. Let's see, 49. And 49 minus 16, right? Let's see, 49 minus 16. That's going to be 34, right? You're hoping to make a mistake there. And I think I can do that now. What's that going to be? Well, it's going to be one over, it's going to be root 34, and the square root of 49 is seven. So it's going to be seven over root 34. All right, let's look at our K, see how we did. And I made a mistake. And I'm wondering where I made a mistake. I gotta figure it out. I know I made a Someone said, how do you make I'm looking at my answer. It's not the same answer. So what did I go wrong? Like four squared is 16, right? Oh, my subtraction's wrong. That's where I went wrong. I gotta correct that. I said 16 from 49 was 34. That's not true. I don't know how that happened, but it happens. Mistakes happen. Let me erase this over here. Let me erase this over here. And erases over here. I made a mistake. Happens all the time. So 16 from 49 is going to be 33. Sorry about that. All right. Another thing I want to point out is some students are rather annoyed by having roots in the bottom. I'm not. But what they do is they rationalize. And this will give me 7 root 33 over 33. And that's a fine answer, too. Both answers are listed, both answers are completely acceptable. All right, let's go to number six now. Should be a relatively simple problem. And let's write it down. So what's, what do they want? They want to find the derivative. So dy dx, well, the derivative of arc tangent is going to be one over one plus the argument squared times the derivative of the argument, which can be one third. All right, I got to simplify them. And what do you get? One over one plus x squared over nine times one third. Got to keep going, all right? So someone says, what would you do now? And I, I, again, what I do and what you do are two different things, but the answers can't be different. I'm going to multiply top and bottom by three. Someone says, why would you do that? It makes you retic really easy. What's your retic on top? One times one times three is three. What do you get on bottom? Well, I want to point out true property. Three times three is nine. Nine times one is nine. And nine times x squared over nine is x squared. Could I have made an error? Of course I could. Look at the k. Make sure you look at the same answer. Why do we practice? So when we get to exams, we don't look foolish. All right, let's go to seven. And let's see if we can do this one over here. And I, I have to remember, certainly if you can't remember, I have, to, I have to derive again, but I think I just did this, right? So I think I can write this down. dy dx. The derivative of arc cosine looks just like the arc, arc sine, but it's minus one over the square root of one minus its argument squared. We'll do that later. Times the derivative of the inside, which can be 45x4. I got the derivative. Let's write this down. Minus 45x4. What do you get on the bottom? The root. 1 minus, well, 9 times 9 is 81. x5 times x5 is x10. All right, let's look at our k. And again, the reason for looking at k is I want to see if I got it right. If I got it wrong, I'm, I'm going to fess up to it. And let's see, did I get that? Yeah, I did. This is a good job. Let's go to number eight. Number eight looks relatively simple. What am I doing? Well, I rewrite it. This is y equals 
this would be six minus x squared to the one half power plus arc sine five x. So let's write this dy dx down and we'll clean it up later. What's that gonna be? Well, it's gonna be one half, six minus x squared. Well, take half from one, you get minus one half, times of the inside, which is minus two x. Let's keep moving to the right, plus we'll clean it up later. Sorry about that. That's gonna be the derivative of arc sine is one over one minus its argument squared. Well, I'm getting better at this, 25 x squared times the inside chain rule, which is five, all right? Let's clean it up a tiny little bit. This first term is definitely gonna be negative. And you get X on top, the twos cancel, and you get a square root of six minus X squared on the bottom, plus five over the root one minus 25 X squared. Again, I'm gonna claim that's the answer. Let's look at the key and see how we did. And did I get it? I got the first term, right? And I got the second term, all is going well. All right, let's go to number nine. Number nine is arctangent. And again, I'm gonna write this down. And this is not gonna be, you know, you could write down y prime, I'm not saying you can't, but it's really, you have to send this is dy dt now. All right, let's see if we can do that. And what's the derivative of arctangent? It's gonna be one over one plus its argument squared. Chain rule, I've got to do derivative that argument now. And this is going to be tough. So it's going to be five minus T squared. And then it's going to be five minus T times over the top, which is going to be one minus the top times the derivative of the bottom, which is minus one. I realize some students, they say, okay, I'm exhausted. They put a box on it. And it, it, it doesn't look good though. I, I have to go through the work. I know it's painful. I can multiply the bottom out. What do I get? I get five minus T squared plus five plus T squared. I just did the bottom. That's all I did. That's easy. Now, why is that? Yeah, multiply it across, really simple to do. What do you get on top? Well, I got to put this down for you you get five minus T plus five plus T. Well, that looks easy. That's just the number 10. I'm gonna do the bottom for you. It's painful, but I wanna do it. 25 minus, let's see, 10 T, right? Plus T squared plus 25 plus 10t plus t squared. Let's keep going, we'll look at the key later. That's 10, 50, plus, again, that's 50. These disappear, plus 2t squared. All right, I'm gonna divide through by two. I, I only do things because they're simple, by the way. Five, 25 plus t squared. I'm gonna to commit to that. Let's look at their answer, see what they got. A miracle, we got the same answer. All right, so the next question, number 10. And number 10 is a derivative problem. So I'll write this down, y prime. In this case, it means dy dx. It's gonna be three times the arc tan of x raised to, I decrease it by one, right? That would be two times the derivative of the arctan, which is one over one plus x squared. Well, let's write this down a little neater. It's gonna be three arctan of x whole thing cubed, I'm sorry, squared over one plus x squared. Put a circle on this. I'm gonna look and see if I got the right answer. I'm looking at this. I'm looking at this and I feel pretty good about it. So that's about it. Um, and thank you for your attention. Again, if you have any concerns that need to be addressed, you should come by during office hours and we can certainly talk through those concerns with you. Thank you.